It's time for the Southern Scream, and we've got you covered from body art to haunted ships to zombie walks. If it scares you, well, we have it for you. So get ready. The Southern Scream starts now. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Southern Scream. I'm WSAV's Natalie Hendricks. Well, we made it to Friday. Happy Halloween. You know, it's been Scream Week all week here at the Southern Scene, and we couldn't have done it without the great help from our sponsor, the Georgia Lottery. We want to say a big thank you to them and remind you to get out and try out their all new Walking Dead Scratcher. You could be a big winner. That's right, up to about $50,000. And I like the sound of that. Well, you know, Scream Week has been just that, a scream. I mean, there were a lot of thrills that made me laugh a lot this week, and also a lot of chills that scared the daylights out of me. Now today, we're at historic Bonaventure Cemetery. As you know, this is the final resting place of Johnny Mercer, and it was immortalized in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Now, as you know, many movies have been filmed here, including Now and Then and also The Gift. Those things make Bonaventure Cemetery a popular tourist attraction, and you cannot deny the incredible history here and all the stories that you hear about Bonaventure. But so do the old tree-lined roadways. It captures your attention, the unique cemetery sculptures and architecture and the mystique surrounding it. Well, you know, all this week we've talked about candy, costumes, haunted houses, haunted forests, corn mazes, a little bit of everything. And we're not done yet. I mean, we can't be. It's Halloween. You know, each and every year during Halloween, people enjoy and look forward to covering up with that great, scary costume. But when it comes to covering up with something a little more permanent like tattoos, well, some people balk. But the stigma of tattoos is going away, and that's partly because of the commitment of the artist who designed them. I think a lot of older generations still have that thing where they, they associate it with like biker gangs and outlaw activity, but I think uh, it has been it has been opened up to a wider audience. It's definitely more accepted. I think that businesses are becoming a little bit more lenient. A larger percentage of people in America are tattooed at adult, you know, as adults than not. So, if you know, out of ten people, how many of those, if you're if you're going to discriminate against tattoos, are you going to not hire? because they have tattoos that are definitely qualified. They've changed a lot over the years. Uh, 15 years ago, when I started tattooing, it was still looked upon as bad and, you know, got a lot of crazy looks from that. But it's grown over the years and crazy with the television shows and everything else, a larger group of people are coming in to get tattooed. And a larger group are accepting it. I tattoo all kinds of people all the time, you know. Um, from elderly to federal prosecutors to just anyone. So it, it's grown a lot, it's changed a lot. There's still a lot of people that come in here and get tattooed and they want to be able to cover them up. They want big tattoos, but they want to be able to hide them. So that mentality still exists. I don't think it's off-putting when people see the gallery or when people see the, the cleanliness of kind of the logo and the style. Um, so they often come in and check it out and, you know, because we have the t-shirts and the artwork on the walls. It, it doesn't feel quite what you would think from a tattoo shop called The Butcher. With the change of, of the acceptance over the 15 years, the art has changed too. And it's become so advanced. And, and along with that have become artists and people who have been to art school and people who have style. So the shops are getting a little more elaborate and, you know, art galleries and decorative and they're not you know, little holes in the wall anymore. I think tattooing is in a, the best place it's ever been because there's so much talent. There's so many incredible t tattooers out there like pushing the envelope and doing really beautiful work. <laughs> okay, don't go away. Coming up next on the Southern Scream, we'll take you to some of the South Carolina's most haunted locations. Well, do you dare go inside? Well, the Southern Scream dares. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the Southern Scream on WSAV and my LC. Well, you know, today we're enjoying ourselves and we have our cameras out and about in beautiful historic Bonaventure Cemetery, of course, located in the Thunderbolt. Now, you know, they do offer guided tours and the grounds are open from eight to five. There's so much history out here. All you have to do if you have any questions, you'd like to take one of those guided tours. Just go to the information you see right there on your screen. You know, all this week we've been talking about all these haunted places in the southeast. Well, right up the road a piece in Berkeley County, South Carolina, there's another location that some say is the most haunted. It's an old plantation along Lake Moultrie near Panopolis. Well, some say a ghost of a woman haunts the 1822 home. Check out what happens when a couple of spirit hunters went inside. What you're watching is video taken from inside the Stony Landing house. Ashley and Pam are just getting started when they get a spine chilling welcome while their camera captures this orb. During the day, this old Stony Landing house circa 1843 doesn't seem so frightening. Those spirit hunters Ashley Fields and Pam Nance tell me there doesn't necessarily have to be tragedy for paranormal activity to happen. But the fact that she said Harrison won't be, then we knew that it was Francis. Okay. So um, you guys have been here many times. I'm already scared. <laughs> you guys have that been. Was, that was upstairs. And there it was, a big thump heard coming from upstairs, but from a room that was locked. And just as we were talking about Frances Ravenel Harrison, the woman Pam and Ashley believe still lives in this house. And this is the room we just heard the noise. This is where it came from. The time the door was locked, we couldn't get in, so I got the key. There's nothing on the floor. There's really nothing to make a noise. Perhaps it was the sister of Dr. St. Julian Ravenel trying to communicate. <laughs> Pam and Nancy believe it takes a certain type of person to draw a spirit out. Yet at some houses their manifestations are so frequent it doesn't matter who enters through the door. Santi Cooper also owns this plantation, Wampi, and here there's a lot of activity that's been reported. A woman's been seen on these very stairs. In fact, the phone just rang three times when our camera was off, but Pam and Ashley believe that it's not necessarily paranormal activity here, but people living in a different dimension. Time is interwoven, and perhaps these people are still living their lives. Which might explain why Pam may have felt someone getting into bed with her. But it was also in this room at about two o'clock in the morning, I was awakened by someone getting in the bed with me. And for a moment I thought something had scared Ashley. Yet Ashley was sound asleep and it's not the only thing they heard. You're not really sure and I remember Pam and I looking at each other and going, is the shower, the shower's on. Can you tell us your name? Through their EVPs, they learned it was Sarah, commonly seen by guests and staff at Wambi. She's known to be mischievous, leaving handprints on newly made beds. But um, it's the spirit like woman at Wambi who many right have reported seen clear as day. Leave. That dark shadow to the left, captured in three flash frames, is where she's often seen. And there's been an apparition seen here on the front landing, an apparition seen at the top of the stairs an apparition seen in the bedroom to the left upstairs. It's a sight so frightening, it's said to have sent Hall of Fame quarterback Terry Bradshaw running out in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, when it comes to thrills and chills, well, some say Charleston definitely gives Savannah, well, a run for its money. We're doing a little paranormal investigating where some say the Yorktown is haunted. <laughs> Bruce Fry works as a clinical pharmacist at MUSC's Children's Hospital. In his time off, he enjoys volunteering on board the USS Yorktown. And I will uh, greet the guests as they come aboard the ship, and then I'll also take some of the uh, guests on uh, tours of various parts of the ship. The ship saw service during World War II and Vietnam. 141 men were killed while serving on board. These days, the main group spending the night on board are Boy Scouts. Dr. Fry says occasionally, a troop leader will come up to him the next day. You know, and they would come up and say, you know, like, you know, last night, a funny thing happened. They would go on to describe strange things. 
Well, last night, we thought the kids were running around, and when we went out into the passageways, nobody was there. Fry says he has seen and heard things as well, especially in the engine room. And to go down to that part of the tour, it's five decks below the hangar deck. And it's kind of, you have to go down ladders, and I've never heard of anybody coming down all that way, and then all of a sudden deciding they don't want to see it and go back up. Yet he estimates that at least a dozen times. I've been down there, I've heard, you know, voices, sounds like, you know, people talking, you know. You really can't pick up a conversation. And you hear, you know, you know, a variety of, you know, steps coming down the stairs or on the catwalk. And if I'm over where the turbines are, I'll, you know, kind of turn around looking to greet the people, you know, coming from where the boilers are. And you wait, and it's only one way in and one way out. And it's like, yeah, they're not there. And it's like, well, that's strange. When the Yorktown was first offering ghost tours, Dr. Fry took his wife along. She took lots of pictures during the tour. Something in, in, in the back of one picture caught my eye, and I enlarged it. This is the photograph his wife took. There's the shape, the image of what I would call an enlisted sailor. Without telling her why, he asked his wife to take a look at the picture. And she took a look and she says, there's a person there. I took a picture of him and he's staring at me. Brian Parsons is the Yorktown's electrician. We've had several employees actually see uh, shadows or uh, figures move about the decks. Um, footsteps are a very common uh, thing to hear around here. Um, and there have actually been a few reports of people feeling something touch them. He has heard noises and footsteps, even seen a shadow figure. I guess the most real experience for me was um, sitting in a room that was probably 10 by 10, and uh, I wasn't, you know, more than five feet away from the door when the door slammed open. It didn't just it didn't just open. It, it opened with force, and I stepped out, you know, two, two big steps, and I was out in the passageway, and I looked both directions. There was nobody. A few months ago, a woman was taking pictures on the flight deck. She uh, snapped a picture of the uh, cockpit of the uh, H-3 helicopter up there, and she took it back down and looked at it and noticed a, uh, an outline of somebody in it. When you uh, got looking at the picture, you could actually see a what look like a fully uniformed helicopter pilot and there's no mannequins, no nothing in the helicopter. Dr. Fry says every incident convinces him something mysterious is definitely happening. Yeah, maybe there is something to, you know, the paranormal activity that people talk about. So I'll have to say that I'm still a little skeptical, but you know, I'm starting to head to it's getting a little little convincing. Okay, don't go away. Coming up next on the Southern Scream, while well, we shuffle off for a zombie walk, we'll show you how to get zombified for a good cause. I did. You don't want to miss this, so stay with us. Welcome back to the Southern Scream on WSAV and My LC. You know, we're having so much fun this week during Scream Week. Thanks to our good friends at the Georgia Lottery who made it all possible. We want to make sure we remind you, too, to check out their all new Walking Dead Scratcher. I mean, here's the thing you could be a really big winner, up to $50,000. Now, that'll definitely make it worthwhile. You know, everywhere you look these days, there seems to be zombies. Everybody's into the zombie theme. Well, hopefully there are no zombies where we are today in beautiful Bonaventure Cemetery. I mean, if there are, well, hopefully me and my cameraman Drew can outrun them. Well, kind of like these people in this next story. Recently on Fort Stewart, over 150 runners took part in the Dawn of the Zombies 5K. Runners spent the entire time dodging the walking dead. They ran through the woods trying to protect their flags, which represented their life. The organizer says it was a fun way to revamp a classic run. 
For some reason, zombies seem to be kind of the it thing in pop culture from people watching Walking Dead and, you know, I've seen other zombie runs in other areas around Georgia, so I thought, hey, why not do one here? Okay, now if that sounds like a lot of fun, well, you can get in on the undead action at the 7th Annual Savannah Zombie Walk. And that's coming up tomorrow. Now, you don't want to miss this. Festivities start at noon at Emmett Park, and the walk begins at 7 p.m. on River Street. Now, the walk is free with a canned food donation to benefit America's Second Harvest Food Bank of Coastal Georgia. By donating, you will be able to have your face zombified for free. Ugh, the zombie walk, it's going to be so much fun. And let me just tell you, getting zombified or becoming the living dead, it isn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> Let's get zombified. You know, when it comes to Halloween, well, safety is definitely key, especially when it comes to your little one's costume. Let's go, guys. Give him a hand. The Yonkers Fire Department's class of 2013 is deep in training, hoping they won't ever have to respond to a tragedy on Halloween. We're aware of numerous cases uh, over the years where children's costumes have actually caught fire and seriously injured them, including one death. John Flynn is deputy chief of the Yonkers Fire Department. He warned about costumes labeled as being flame resistant. That doesn't mean that they're flame proof. They, they will still ignite. As we saw here at the fire academy. And just look at what happens to this banana costume for infants made of polyester. The thing about polyester and nylon is it's harder to ignite, but when it does ignite, it melts to your skin. With this Native American prairie rose costume, the fringe on the edge seems to resist catching fire, but not a decorative seam. However, this beautiful bride outfit held up fairly well, and even when a flame did ignite the fabric... It tends to self-extinguish. This Renaissance damsel dress did the same, but the lesson here... If exposed long enough to flames, anything can catch fire. I think that um, buying flame retardant costumes is, is the way to go, clearly. But um, also, clearly, they do burn. So we need to keep them away from anything that can burn. Deputy Chief Flynn says that's why you should also be mindful when walking around jack-o'-lanterns with open flames. Well, there's about a thousand fires a year that are started from decorations being the item first ignited. So people should keep that in mind and don't put any decorations anywhere near a flame, a candle. Other safety tips go beyond preventing fires. We recommend that all children that are going to be out after dark carry a flashlight so they're visible, they can see where they're going and they're visible to motorists. Definitely some great tips there. You know, another way to increase visibility, take reflective tape and put on the costumes or on the Halloween bags. That way the visibility is definitely there. Also, the Halloween accessories. I mean, if your kids are carrying around swords, make sure they're soft and flexible. That way there will be no accidents. And here's the most important thing. Make sure you check that Halloween candy before your little ones dive in. Well, speaking of candy, our friends at River Street Sweets, you want to make sure you stop by there. They definitely have your Halloween treats ready to go. Halloween is about candy, right? I mean, kids love candy and they trick or treat. And, you know, for the adults, we have a lot of items for them as well. But, you know, we'll take our world famous pralines and put a spin on those with our uh, pumpkin pralines. So you have pumpkin, pumpkin pralines. Pumpkin pralines. We'll get you to try one of those here shortly. But we add real pumpkin to the mix, so it gives a nice flair. It's an or a little more of an orange so you color. You actually use real pumpkin, real in, pumpkin, the pumpkin recipe. in the pralines. Yeah, and they're fantastic. And, and along with that, we make our pumpkin fudge as well this time of year. So, so pumpkin fudge. And those are two things that I've never had pumpkin pralines, pumpkin fudge. Absolutely. And now you guys are even running a special during where your pralines are yeah, concerned. Yeah, we do. And, and people can come in and, and at this particular location, you can buy a pound of them, you get a half pound free right now. Oh my too. gosh. So, so you a buy, a pound, buy a pound of pralines, you get a half pound free. Absolutely. 
Okay, you know, during this time of year, I love it because there's always something going on. Savannah, the Coastal Empire, and Low Country. So let's take a look at what's happening on the local scene. Brought to you by the Georgia Lottery. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for us. I hope you've enjoyed watching as the southern scene turned into the southern scream this week. Thanks to our good friends at the Georgia Lottery for making it all possible. A big thank you to the Georgia Lottery. We also want to remind you to check out their all new Walking Dead Scratcher. You could be the next big winner. That's right, up to $50,000. So make sure you get those Walking Dead Scratchers. We also want to thank the folks at Bonaventure Cemetery for letting us bring our cameras out here today to bring you our show. Now remember, you can see the Southern Scene twice now, weekdays and weeknights. Weekdays on WSAV at noon and of course weeknights at 7 p.m. on MyLC. If you have a story idea for us or you'd like to send us a message, you can find us on Facebook, The Southern Scene. Make sure you like us and also you can also go to our website, WSAV.com. Just be sure to click on our Southern Scene page. Remember, what's important to you will always be important to us. And as always, keep your eyes open. Our Southern Scene cameras, I can promise you, they're always out and about. And you never know when you might be seen on the southern scene. Happy Halloween, everybody. See you next time.